Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for upper intermediate to advanced English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B2 C1 English Story The Toff William was deeply unmotivated. He could feel it running through his veins. He had no desire to do anything. He could, quite easily, spend the day laying on his bed staring at the ceiling. He was tired and uninspired. It didn't help that the weather was appalling. Days turned into weeks of storms and rain and sleet. You couldn't go out without coming home drenched. Grey, lacklustre skies were draining William's spirit. He dreamed of longer, warmer days. But then, would he just sit in the garden staring up at the sky? What if his mojo and zest for life never came back? William was downtrodden. He was feeling well and truly sorry for himself. You see, the problem with William was that he had always got everything he ever wanted. He came from an extremely privileged family. A family with a succession of doctors, dentists and lawyers who were all privately educated and went on to start their own surgeries and practices in some of England's most luxurious areas. It was nothing to William to go out and spend a hundred pounds on a bottle of wine or to buy a suit worth almost a thousand pounds. Money was no object to him. He lived a life of luxury and yet he didn't seem to realise or appreciate it. Even when he went off to university, he still moved within the same circles of so-called elite posh people the truth was, there was nothing elite about these people. They were just born into wealthy families. William coasted through university. He decided not to take the path of his family members and instead chose to study English literature at a prestigious university. He had visions of becoming a world-renowned poet and playwright by the age of 25. After all, what was stopping him? Throughout his course, he did the bare minimum. He partied and spent the majority of his monthly allowance on beer, football and take-out food. He lounged around the lavish house he shared with two other students and occasionally went for a run or to the gym. William was confident in the knowledge that he would do well, all his peers and family members had, so, of course, he would too. When he finished his course with a low 2-1, his family were not impressed. But he was one of the student newspaper editors throughout his study, so he blamed the added workload from the newspaper on his poor results. What they didn't know was that William often outsourced the work to first-year students who wanted to get experience in editing. He hardly did anything. After graduation, as was tradition in William's family, he took the summer off to travel and explore. This was paid for by a trust fund which was gifted to William on his 21st birthday. He spent the £20,000 on a trip to Ibiza, a tour around Italy and on several music festivals. By the end of the summer, he only had £2,000 of the fund left. Of course, William knew he would inherit a shed load of money in the years to come, but for now, he was teetering on the edges of being skint. He didn't worry. He knew he would get a job rather quickly, this had been instilled in him since he attended preschool in London. Like his peers, he was trained from a young age to be confident and excel in interviews and networking situations. William was a pro at small talk and chit-chat. 
He worked the room. The only problem was that wasn't enough to save him from his impending joblessness. William C.V. was lacklustre to say the least. All that was on there were average grades, despite having hundreds of thousands of pounds spent on his education and an unpaid editor position at a tiny university newspaper that, let's be honest, nobody read. As he lay on his bed, he looked out over the vast garden that accompanied his parents' house. It was stunning. They had to have a gardener to tend to it, as it was full of wonderful hedges, plants, trees and shrubbery, not to mention an extensive vegetable patch. The family garden was flourishing more than William's upcoming career. He knew he only had himself to blame. He had become self-absorbed and pompous. He assumed that the family name or money might buy him into his dream career of working for a publishing house. After all, it had for several of his friends. But then again, they had all worked as interns on their summers off, whereas William spent his summers getting drunk down the local pub with his local friends. It was such fun! William huffed to himself and was glad he had chosen to have fun rather than work. Couldn't he have done both? Then he wouldn't be in this position getting nagged by his family day in and day out. He rolled over on his bed and saw his notebook that was filled with his musings, journals, poems and short stories. He had secretly entered several competitions and was rejected from all of them. He assumed he would at least be a runner-up. He had never lost anything in his life, but he had never really tried for anything either. Everything had always been given to him on a plate. He assumed that would be the case for the rest of his life. William opened his latest edition MacBook and reluctantly browsed the internet looking for jobs. All his mother's and father's attempts to find him something had fallen on deaf ears. Unfortunately, the majority of their contacts were in the law and medical worlds, both of which William had zero inclination to join. It didn't matter how badly a job paid, as William was incredibly spoilt. His family had already said they would purchase a small flat for him to live in London, so even if it were an intern's wage, that would suffice. For now. He found three jobs that he could potentially get. One was an intern at a publishing house and paid very little. The other was working as an editor's assistant for a TV company's press office and the final one was working as a content writer for a tiny website he had never heard of. William also found another writing competition but he was well and truly defeated. If he hadn't won the others, he certainly wasn't going to win that one. Perhaps his writing was rubbish. He suspected it was. Just because he wanted to be a poet and writer didn't mean he was actually any good at it. But then again, a lot of his old school friends were incredibly average and yet they were now in top banking jobs in the city. He knew it was all about making contacts. William laid back on his bed and stared up at the ceiling all of his privilege, pomp and private education had got him precisely nowhere. He thought about his options again and they were appearing to be incredibly grim. He needed to do something. He needed a second chance. He realised now he had been arrogant and his assumptions were wrong. Sure, some of his old private school chums were doing well but were they respected? Did their colleagues think they were competent? Probably not. William didn't want to be like them. He wanted to carve his own path. 
He sat up all night and started to extensively research. Finally, he came up with a plan which he presented to his parents in the hope they would approve. He decided to write down all the pros and cons of his options. By 4am, he knew what he wanted to do. The next day, he proposed his plan to his parents. They sat quietly and listened to his well-rounded idea. William wanted to go back to university, this time to study a specialised master's degree at a university that also offered work placements. That way, he could get the work experience he desperately needed and he would have the opportunity to learn more about writing and publishing. The course he found had both a September start and a January start, he was too late for the September start, so he would apply for January and work as a Christmas temp at a local farm shop until then. He wanted to start making his own way and stop relying on the money and connections of his parents. His parents were astonished. They sat back and listened intently. Their son was a changed man. They were pleased with his choices and proud that he wanted to stand on his own two feet. That afternoon, and for the following few days, William worked hard on his university application. If he didn't get on the January course, he would have to wait until next September, and that was something he certainly didn't want to do. Whether William got onto the course or not, he felt proud in the knowledge that he no longer wanted to be another toff. He aimed to forge a life for himself that wasn't reliant on other people, but on his own talents. He had to start showing the world what he could really do. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. See you soon!